everyone is super excited for the new Hogwarts Legacy game, and I'm sure it's an amazing RPG, not only for fans of the franchise, but what about love? Ooh, can I date them? What about friends? Those are they dating? C can, can I date him and her? What about dating in a wizard school? Can I date them? I can't be the only one who loves the idea of roaming the aisles of an old wizard school castle and talking to hot boys in order to fall in love with them. Can I? I am not. As 30,000 fans bought this game when it came out in 2008 and 2009. Hmm. Wasn't that the peak of the Harry Potter high? So is this really the Hogwarts dating game you are craving for? You play as Lulu, a young witch, wanting to bring happiness to the world with the help of magic. Unlike Harry Potter, she knew since she was a child she's a witch and wanted to go to Hogwarts or hear Milus Glare. But as she arrives and is to choose one magical main attribute among fire, water, earth, wind, darkness and light, it's found out she doesn't have a house or uh, attribute she belongs to. Just like Harry Potter, fits all houses, likewise is Lulu allowed to choose her destiny and magical element. But who to choose? Luckily she doesn't have to choose on the spot like poor Harry Potter but has half a year to find out where she belongs. And what is a better way to find your element than hanging out with hot guys with different elements in order to learn from them? On top of managing her busy schedule to keep up with the lectures in order to impress her chosen boy, she has to get to know them and spend time with them to finally choose her magical element. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that she is as special a student as Harry Potter was, as everyone is impressed by her not having an element which harbors enormous strength, but also could bring destruction if not handled responsibly. And she is the only witch with such powers since eons ago. And the school couldn't be more Hogwarts. The overall old car cell fits the magical school theme so much. There are long majestic hallways, speaking statues, and you even enter the dorms through talking pictures. Just this time around they are sleeping dragons. <laughs> you have a grand library, a dinner hall, even with similar tables. And I also found a moving staircase. But the similarities don't stop here. Lulu also makes a trusted friend, Hermione, aka Amy, who is studious and smart, but also supports Lulu with her kind heart and useful tips. Another character I felt reminded of was Albert Asquirinius. Asquirinius? Asquirinius? Quirrell? Quirin, Quirin. Another character I felt reminded of was Albert as Quirinius Quirrell with an, another not very well kept secret. <laughs> but don't worry, it's nothing scary. It has something to do with dating. Speaking of dating, you can date six wizards. Julius, a genius and curious student with a kind heart who is always lost in his complicated thoughts. Lagi is actually half dragon and not the brightest candle on the cake and it's under there. But what is extremely cute that he unwillingly turns into a dragon when he comes in contact with a girl and only turns back when he eats to his fullest. Noel is very studious as well but also goofy and slightly noisy. Est is calm and secluded, doesn't want to talk to anybody and can't show his feelings. Alvaro is a flirt and never takes anything seriously. All that counts for him is fun in his carefree life. And lastly, my favorite character by far, and winner of the most sexy award, without a second thought, is Bilal. The second prince of a desert country who wants to harbor his water magic skills in order to help his country flourish again. And it's not only his moving backstory and noble motives that made me fall deeply in love with Bilal, but also his gentle manner and relentless pursuit of Lulu. But the coolest of them all is the heroine herself. She's so bright and straightforward and not your typical like shined and secure heroine. Of course she also has her insecurities, but she tackles all her problems directly and pushes the allies forward herself and pushes their relationship forward herself. She's really a refreshing and admirable heroine. Okay, Hogwarts setting, some Harry Potter-esque characters. Do you do typical Hogwarts stuff? Actually, yes. First of all, you have to attend school, going to one of the three classes, to learn important magical skills in order to impress your love interest. Secondly, you can take on missions almost every week. And those were the segments that really made me feel like going to a magical school for witches. Those magical quests can reach from cursed books, over talking creatures, to a labyrinth floor. Everything a magical school needs, you can find here. 
and together with your friends you have to solve the vast mysteries of the school. But as much as those segments enforced the Hogwarts feeling, as much was I annoyed by the gameplay system. Which I think is the only true gripe of the game. Because this scheduling and stat raising gameplay comes with a huge problem. Repetitiveness. Each week you have to schedule your classes just to watch the same animations play out again and again and again. Skip through random repeated dialogue again and again and again. And waiting for everything to skip, the animation, the dialogue, takes about half of the playtime. I kid you not, it's tedious and it feels pointless. I hope the Switch version will implement a skip to next choice button, please, seriously. The other news ends were the random date events. Of course you want to go on a date with your favourite character, yeah, that's a no-brainer. But whether he invited you throughout the week depended on pure luck and could lead to endless quick saving and quick loading, quick saving, quick loading for hours in order to trigger this randomized invitation. And don't even get me started on that luck-based card game. You have to win like 15 times in order to unlock two additional CDs. No, 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 not with me. No, no, bye. No, no. Getting through the game and getting a good ending is easy. But 100%ing it is a nightmare. Let me tell you that. The rest of the game is rather gorgeous though. The voice actors all do a great job. You might know Lagi's voice actor from Shinin Amnesia, for example. Or Alvaro also voices another flirt in Nilad Miladin on Tembin, Chizodo. And Bilal's voice actor might motivate me to finally finish Sweet Clown. Just stay away from Noel's other role as another Noel in Kuesaru Kaihana. And Julius also did a splendid job in Nilad Miladin no Tembin as Rui, or Shinobi Koyotsutsu as Kurodo. The music is fun and sweet and fits the light-hearted and friendly tone. And the art. It's so beautiful and will for many Otomo fans be the reason to buy the game. It's by the same artist as Burial by Barricade or Radiant Tale. And in the added CGs of the Vita version you really see how much her art improved and how she found the art style we love so much today. The language difficulty is about lower intermediate level. Almost upper beginner due to the lot of repetition and daily dialogue. But on the other hand, the missions or little plot segments are slightly more difficult due to the fantasy setting. In the repeated gameplay settings, the MC Lulu is voiced since the Vita version. But I don't think that really adds too much as you'll end up skipping those parts anyway. That's why the English mobile version also has a charm as it cut over the gameplay, which makes the game so much more enjoyable for me. But it also cut the voices, and as so many games in that story jar app, playing the game on your phone will end up more expensive than buying the console version, but I mean, hey, it's in English. <laughs> and as there is already a localization, I think with the Switch port now, there might even be chances for a localization of the Switch port. At least there's hope. <laughs> The game is definitely much lighter in tone than the Harry Potter series. There is no real villain. Most characters don't even have a tragic backstory. They are still relatively young, inexperienced and innocent. Est and Lagi's love stories are the most childish, as they cannot understand nor communicate their feelings. So even until the end, the relationship stays kind of unclear. And very young, you know? <laughs> Julius and Noel, though, are the perfect sons-in-law. They are honest, have bright characters articulate their feelings, but at the same time are inexperienced in love, thus clumsy and unrefined, but tell cute and endearingly innocent love stories. My personal top tier were Alvaro and Bilal, as they tell slightly more mature love stories. They also express their feelings clearly, but it doesn't stay that innocent. Apparently I am also known as the steamy girl, <laughs> as one comment recently told me. So yes, I like steaminess. And Alvaro and especially Bilal could quench my thirst. Though the overall game is cute, fluffy and light, there still are two characters with rather dark and even twisted backstories. And even sudden bad endings in which you can die, which came really unexpected for me. But they are short and easy to evade. In general, what you can call story only happens in the last hour of the game. After you've spent weeks learning and scheduling and dating and flirting, but I cannot help to wish that the whole game was like that last segment. But still I think, as a character-driven game, 
The game is quite romantic, as almost every other week of the 24 weeks you spend in game, you can go on a date with your beloved. The game is for everyone who would love to attend Hogwarts, but this time around, don't neglect their love life, wants to experience a magical school, in a for the most part child-friendly system and story. The system is hella annoying, but it might be worth it for a character you really like. Yet, yeah, you will have to sit through two hours of skipping and waiting of the four to five hour long routes and should be able to enjoy the missions and random events. I personally didn't extremely enjoy the missions and abhorred the gameplay. Oh my god. And randomness of events. <sighs> Yet, Bilal made it worth it. And if I got you interested in this unique Otome game, consider buying it via my affiliate links to help me increase the quality of my videos or even become my patron. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> for some extra content and help me pay for the games and the equipment at all. And I can't wait for the Switch board, which will technically include four games. Four. The main game, you just heard about. The first FD to the main game, which is already included in the Vita version. That FD though is extremely short, like two hours per character. Yet really cute. And maybe hot, or who knows. Don't trust Steamy Girl on this one. The Switch version then will also include the sequel to the main game, taking place after the normal ending of the main game, which means you're not together with any of the guys and then get transported into the past, have to solve mystery and everything again. And then the sequel is followed by another fan disc, finally giving you more sweet time with everyone and also watching them grow up. But I will make a separate review for those games once the Switch board of this little Hogwarts Otome sees the light of day in May. Until then, I can recommend another game in a magical school setting you just have to play next. But it's a much, much steamier one. As you try not to blush in Shinobi Koi Otsutsu.